Good evening, Chinook fans, and welcome to Chinook Radio. We are here at Mulcahy Stadium. We have a special day today as it is the ABL showcase for the participating teams here. We have the, our Chinooks will be taking on the Anchorage Bucks. Now, this game does not count toward our season as the players will be showing off their talent talents in front of the pro scouts here today. So this will be a seven inning ball game between both teams. And we're definitely excited to be here. And I'm excited to have a special guest join on the broadcast today. We have our head coach, John Groff, up here in the broadcast booth with me. Now, this is a day that Groff always looks forward to in the summer. Uh, back home, this is his job. You know, he's a broadcaster at Tyler Junior College, so he is definitely ex excited to be up here, and we're excited to have him. So, John, welcome. Am I hot? Yeah, you, you're good. You're good. Okay. You're on. Well, Kevin, thanks for your, uh, your uh, kind words. And this is a little hobby of mine. That's not my main job. I'm a professor at Tyler Junior College. But it is fun to be back in the booth. It's a really nice day here in Anchorage. Uh, a little breezy, a little cool. I guess it just got done throwing batting practice and hitting pregame in and out. There's a bunch of scouts here. These guys are excited to play. And I think we're maybe about to – I don't know if we're going to have an anthem or not, but let me try to get through these starting lineups before we get this game going. The home team is the Anchorage Bucks. They're 15 and 17 on the summer. They're led by second-year head coach Ken Hokum. Uh, their, their lineup looks like this. Leading off at third base is Jose Ruiz. Batting second is first baseman Jake V. Batting third is the second baseman J.C. Correa. Batting in the cleanup spot, Troy Clouch, the D.H. Batting uh, in the fifth spot is the catcher, Jacob Castro. Center fielder Brennan Bro bats sixth. Right fielder Jake Vandebreek will bat seventh. Left fielder Tyler Malone bats eighth. And Willie Escala, the shortstop, will bat in the ninth position for coach Ken Hunkoff. Heck, Hokoff, excuse me. The, the starting pitcher for the Bucks will be right-handed sophomore, 6'5 and 200, Preston Snavely. Snavely taking his warm-up toss as we speak. For the Chinooks, they are 13 and 20 on the year. They're led by me. That would be seventh-year head coach, John Grove. <laughs> And Chris Beck is the general manager and the director of baseball for Athletes in Action. Here's what uh, I put on the lineup card today for the Schnucks. Bailey Collins will lead it off and right. J. Paul Fuller, center fielder, Anthony Forte bats third. Jordan Wharton is the third baseman. He'll bat cleanup today. Nick Kreitzer will play first base and bat fifth. Batting sixth is Jaron Largusa, this, the left fielder. Gregory Ozuna is holding down the shortstop spot today in batting seventh. Batting eighth is Luke Vandover, the second baseman. And in uh, center field, or I'm sorry, in uh, as a DH in the ninth spot, Seth Ballinger. So it's Collins, Fullerton, Forte, Wharton, Kreitzer, Largusa, Ozuna, Vandover, and Ballinger for the Chinooks. Starting the mound for the Chinooks is Jared Reclitus, 6'4 and 215, the right-hander from the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee. He'll go the first two innings. Then it will be Anthony Becerra, then Michael Barker, Cole Whitman, and then River Carbone to close it out. Johnny Holstaff today and tomorrow for the Chinooks as uh, Jacob Castro throws it down to second base, and we're about to play baseball here. Showcase game number one for the Chinooks and for the Bucks. And boy, it seems like we've been playing the Bucks all week because we <laughs> yeah, have. <laughs> yeah, we had the three game series against. So this is four in a row. Four. Yeah, so definitely. Yep. Chinooks are coming off a win, and the Bucks are coming off a loss. First pitch, swing and a miss. And we're underway at 4:07 Alaska time. I don't know what time it is where you're at, but we are now underway. 63 degrees at game time. South southeasterly at 13 miles an hour, 44% humidity. Next pitch is going to miss low, one and one on Bailey Collins, the right fielder. Next pitch fouled off. Back behind us to the left, and it's one and two. Collins. Six foot 195 out of Concordia University, Irvine from Littleton, Colorado. Nice summer for himself. Here's the one two. Outside, two balls and two strikes. Snavely, uh, 6'5 and 200 pounds. 
sophomore from Wichita State. He's from Fort Collins, Colorado. So we got Colorado versus Colorado on the opening at bat. Next pitch just misses low. And it's three balls and two strikes. Home plate umpire Scott Johnston. He's from Grand Prairie, Texas. Down at first base is Josh Nolan and Silas Drayden over at third. 3-2 pitch. Just missed. And Collins draws a leadoff walk to get the ball game underway. So the Chinooks, the leadoff base runner, and that will bring up Jay Paul Fullerton, the catcher. Jay Paul, 6-1 and 205 for out of Wabash Valley College. He's head of the UAB, isn't that right? Yes, yep, he'll be so, playing along with Cole Whitman, the pitcher. In awesome. Fall. Snavely on the stretch, the first pitch, foul straight back. Good hit, good uh, swing right there by Jay Paul. Got his hacks in on that first pitch fastball, and it's 0-1 on the foul ball. Still scoreless, just getting underway here on a kind of a warm but breezy day in uh, at Mulcahy Field. Wind blowing straight in from left field. Here's the 0-1. Breaking pitch up under the hands of Jay Paul. That's quickly 0-2. And then the Chinook catcher waiting on deck, Anthony Forte. See Snavely from the stretch. Here's the 0-2. High pop-up right side out of play. Was way up there over the lights. Jay Paul has really been swinging the bat well as of late. Barreling up a lot of balls. These guys use the wood bat in the summer. They're all used to using the aluminum in colleges, so definitely an adjustment. Oh, two, there goes Collins. Throw down to second, and he's out. Wow, what a tag. By Willie Ascala. That ball, Ascala had to pick it and put the tag down in a heartbeat. And he just got Bailey Collins at second. So he's out on the caught stealing two to six. And there's one away here in the first. That will wipe the base runner off for the Schnooks. Snavely going to continue to go from that stretch. Well, maybe not. Now here he goes into the abbreviated windup. The one-two pitch, low. Nice block there by Castro. It's two balls and two strikes. Of course, Kevin, these guys are all jazzed up. The players are because there's there's scouts from almost every team here this weekend. That's definitely a big moment for them today and tomorrow. Absolutely. The next pitch fouled down the left side. Look out. It's down into the bleacher area. Not a whole lot of fans, as you might expect, on a Friday at 412. Is uh we're still in the work week here. Bear Paw Festival back home, right? Eagle oh, River? Yeah. Definitely. We'll try to catch that one either today or tomorrow. Yeah, it's a fun festival they have over in Eagle River. 2-2 two -two pitch. Check swing. Did he go? Did not, says Silas Drayton down at third. And it's a full count on Jay Paul. So both Chinooks now have worked the count to full on the sophomore from Wichita State, Preston Snavely. Payoff pitch. That ball's well hit. Left center field. This is Bro drifting over, making the easy catch for the second out of the inning. F8 if you're scoring at the house. And that will bring up hot hitting Anthony Forte for the Chinooks. Well, I call, I uh, I broadcast for both UT Tyler, they're the Patriots, and Tyler Junior College, they are the Apaches. So if I if I slip up and call the Chinooks the Apaches or the Patriots, hopefully uh, there'll be some forgiveness on the, on the audience here. First pitch to Anthony off the plate with the fastball, and it's one ball, no strikes. We'll have to keep our pens handy here the whole time as these all-star events. I've scripted out our lineup. I have no idea who's going to be coming and going for those bucks. 1-0, we got the starting lineup from Coach uh, Hokuff, but uh, we don't have a, a lineup of who's going to pitch. He's got a left-hander getting loose, so I'm sure that uh, he'll probably be in at inning number two. As Anthony Forte bats with a 2-0 count, the pitch. Got jammed, a chopper right back to Snavely. He'll flip it over to first, and that's your inning. Three up, three down, nothing across for the Chinooks in inning number one. 
And showcase game number one for the Bucks and the Chinooks is underway. Looking forward to having you on board. We'll take a brief break and be just a second. All right, we're going to bring you back a little early, go through the defensive alignment uh, for the Chinooks. Out left field, Jaron Largusa. In center, it's Anthony Forte. Out in right field, it's Bailey Collins. Around the infield, it's Jordan Wharton. At uh, third base, Greg Rios in at short. Luke Vandover at second, Nick Kreitzer at first. J. Paul Fullerton back behind the dish. And on the mound, 6'4 and 215 right-hander from University of Milwaukee. Uh, Wisconsin at Milwaukee, Jared Reclitus. And for Reclitus, it's outing number eight of the summer, 43 and two-thirds innings pitched, 38 strikeouts, 13 walks, ERA of 2.47 for Jared. Had a nice summer for himself as he gets the start here in showcase game number one for the Chinooks. Tomorrow's game will be earlier. We'll play the first game of the day, and I'll be back up here. Lord willing, uh, tomorrow with you, Kevin. So look forward to that. The box lineup leading off is the Eastman Jose Ruiz. Jake Veith bats second. J.C. Correa bats third. Troy Clouch, the D.H., will bat cleanup. Jacob Castro, fifth. Brennan Bro sixth. Jake Vandebrink, seventh. Tyler Malone, eighth. And Willie Escala in the nine hole. Here's the first pitch from Jared Reclitus. Fastball misses high. It's one ball, no strikes. Right hand batting third baseman, Jose Ruiz. High pop up, shallow center. And actually, Vandover at second is going to drift over and make the catch. Boy, you had to backpedal, I'll tell you, as a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Jose Ruiz, they had a little sniper yeah, action there. Sniper action there. <laughs> Where's the sniper at? Where's he at? Yeah. <laughs> was, uh, that pop up on Luke. Uh, it appeared, and that wind is definitely yeah. going to be a factor today. It appeared to be going to Anthony 14 center, and then and uh, the wind blew it back, and Luke uh, Vandover actually caught it in uh, deep second base in the outfield. Well, here's Jake Veith, leading hitter in the league, or at least he was a few days ago. I'll pull that up and uh, see if he's still leading the ABL in uh, batting average. But uh, he's had quite a year, was an all-star last year here in the ABL. And... Let's see if we can find the league leaders here. I know he's leading the Bucks in batting average. Next pitch is going to miss. It's one ball and one strike to the left-handed hitting first baseman, Jake Veith. Let's see here. Yeah, he's still leading the league with a 382 average. 23 RBIs for the first baseman. Little tapper foul. Oh, my. Coach Hokoff over there making the play. And he's going to toss it in his Chinook dugout. Good guy, one of the good guys in the ABL. Always enjoy talking to uh, Kenny and the head coach down there coaching first base. They got the jacket. So he's got his jacket on today. A little surprise. Uh, his assistant coach has got the pullover. There's a tapper to second. Vandover, easy play. Two outs. No shift on here. <laughs> the other night when we were playing uh, the Bucks. With uh, Jake Veith up, we put the, the shift on for him. Yeah. Four outfielders <laughs> and uh, three infielders. We had Luke go out to uh, outfield into the right center field, and he seemed to get frustrated at that. And uh, I think for the showcase, we're going to play straight. So <laughs> two outs. Here's J.C. Correa. Of course, the uh, brother of the Major League Correa plays for the Houston Astros. Carlos, is that right? Yep, Carlos yeah. Correa, shortstop. World Series champion. Oh, yeah. First pitch was a breaking pitch in there. 0-1. Oh, off the plate. And it's one ball, one strike. And that looked to be a breaking pitch. It missed inside. Two balls and a strike. 
In 43 and two-thirds, Reclitus has given up 30 hits, 20 runs. Only 12 of those 20 have been earned. Swing and a miss. Got to chase a high fastball. Might have been a cutter. Looked like he had some pretty good uh, movement on it. 2-2, two, two, two outs. Wind up the pitch. Fouls it off to the right side. Coach Hokoff tried to make the play. I'm He's probably glad he didn't make that play because that ball might have hurt his hands. <laughs> so count remains two balls and two strikes. Like this out of the windup. The pitch. There's a tapper up the middle. Tough play here. Ozuna gloves it but can't make the play. That's an infield single in the first hit of the ball game for the Bucks. Infield single, 1B6, if you're scoring at the house. And that will put Correa at first for the designated hitter, Troy Clouch. Our steps in. As a good hitter for the Bucks. On the roster, Clouch is a catcher from Vacaville, California, six foot one ninety five, freshman out of Oregon State. He was a member of the national championship team there with the Beavers. There you go. So he'll be getting a ring here in a couple months. He's got the orange gloves and the orange shoes to prove it. <laughs> First pitch was a strike. It's 0-1, even though the scoreboard says it's 2-3. and three. Pitch is inside. I believe it's 1-1. One and one. Yeah, they're going to reset it now. There you go. Oh, yeah, 2-1. and one. Okay. Two balls and a strike. Two outs. And it's 1-1. One and one. I thought I was right. One ball, one strike, one out. Correa at first. Reclitus from the stretch for the first time today. Fouls that one off. Now it is one ball, two strikes. Umpire's trying to tell the scoreboard operator. <laughs> there we go. Finally got it right. Bottom of inning number one here in Anchorage. We're scoreless. Reclitus from the set position to pitch. That ball's well hit the left, but it's right at Goose in left field. And Jaron hauls it in for out number three. So that'll do it for the Bucks in the bottom of the first. The Chinooks. We'll bring up four, five, and six, Wharton, Kreitzer, and Largusa when we return. And welcome back to Anchorage. We're at Mulcahy Field for the showcase, the scout showcase. We've got representatives from all the major league teams watching these guys this weekend. These games don't count. They're exhibition ball games, but boy, they're, they're really important for these guys for sure, and these scouts will come in. What will happen generally is uh, most of these major league teams will send uh, a regional scout from the California area or the northwest part of the country. That's the shortest trip up here to Alaska. And then – uh, they'll take notes on all these guys during the weekend, and they'll send them to their regional guys uh, where these guys are from. Here's Jordan Wharton, first pitch swinging, pops it up right side, and drifting over is Jake Vandebrake. He'll make the catch in foul territory, and there's one out here in the top of the second. So 
Wharton pops up to in foul territory to Jace Vandebrake. And there's quickly one away. That'll bring up Nick Kreitzer, left-handed hitting first baseman for the Schnooks. And there's scouts from all over, and these players are from all over. So as they send their reports back to their teams, first pitch to Kreitzer misses ball one. They have the opportunity to send the, those reports to the local regional scouts where these guys are from. Of course, all these teams have players from all over the place. Ground ball, second base. This is Correa playing deep at second. And they actually had a little bit of a shift on for Nick there. As the infield here at uh, Mulcahy, they have an extended turf area back behind where the dirt would naturally break. And uh, Correa was playing way back on that, uh, that turf. So two up, two down in the second. Here's Jaron Largusa playing left field. The way we'll split up the lineup today with uh, Danny Dopp and, and Tommy uh, out with the concussions is uh, Largusa and Ballinger will split time left field and DH today. So, And the catchers will share time as well. So Logan White will come in about halfway through this ball game and, and spell Jay Paul Florton. First pitch was a ball. The next one misses low, and it's quickly – 2-0 on Jaron Largusa. New pitcher on the mound for that Bucks, the number 19, John Altman. Okay. Right-handed pitcher, the Alaska native. Ground ball is short, and this is Escala. Flips it over, easy play. Three up and three down, a quiet second inning for the Chinooks. As Largusa is out 6-3. to three. We'll be back in just a minute with the bottom of the second inning. These are seven inning games, so really short, and they generally go kind of quick. So back in Anchorage in just a minute. And welcome back to Mulcahy Stadium. John Groth with you, Dr. John Groth. Kevin Moore is my sidekick today, sort of. He's actually running the mothership here, so I'm just along for the ride. For the Bucks here in the bottom of the second inning, catcher Jacob Castro, then it's Brennan Bro and Jason Vanderbray. Jared Reclite is on for the second inning of work. First pitch just missed. I'm not sure. That was a pretty good pitch. I think Jared thought it was pretty good, too. We got a really nice bird's eye view here, Kevin. A oh, beautiful view. Ground ball right back to Jared. He'll glove it. Underhand flip it over to Nick Kreitzer. One out. So Castro is out on the one three. Here's Brennan Bro, the center fielder for the Bucks. That's from the left side. No, uh, one of the things that's a little different on the showcase weekend, all these teams, I know you can't tell by watching the broadcast, but both teams took on the field pregame batting practice and infield outfield. Ground ball in the first pitch. This is Greg Rozuna. He'll field it and launch it and just does get it. Rozuna with that strong arm at short. Fires over to Nick Kreitzer. There's two outs. Here's Jace Vandebrink, the right fielder. Yes. Reclined is working a quick second inning here. One of the negatives about the showcase, if you got guys swinging away early in the count, pitchers don't get to throw a whole lot of pitches. Oh, yeah. So I would say that uh, Jared probably is going to be uh, under 30 for sure right now. Here's a breaking pitch that uh, Jay Paul blocks, all one. And to break the right fielder, steps in from the left side. 
like we're going to have uh, John Altman staying in. Nobody in the bullpen now for the Bucks at the moment. Chinooks will come back with Anthony Becerra in the third inning. Two balls and no strikes, the pitch. A solid fastball there. And it's two and one. Well, the thing about the all or the, uh, the the showcase weekend is we'll play um, two exhibition ball games. These pitchers, like Jared, will throw a, an inning or two at the most. There's a ground ball to second. This is Luke Vandover. Easy play, inning over. Three up, three down. It's a perfect second inning for Jared Reclitus. His day is over, as we'll have Anthony Becerra toe the rubber next time for the Schnucks in the third. As we head to the top of the third inning, we're still scoreless. It's Showcase Weekend here in Anchorage. Dr. John Groth on the play-by-play -play with Kevin Moore. Back in just a minute. And welcome back to Anchorage, Alaska. Dr. John Groth here. We're at the top of the third inning. And a 7-8-9 for the Chinooks. So looking for their first base hit of the day. Of course, Kevin, we had one of those the other night. <laughs> Unfortunately. 11, 11 innings. 11 inning no hitter. Hit this baseball. <laughs> right here in this ballpark. Oh, yeah. First pitch to Greg. This is low. It's 1-0. As we mentioned earlier, Scott Johnston from Grand Prairie, Texas, behind home plate. Josh Nolan from Kansas City, Missouri, down at first. There's a ground ball to third. This is Jose Ruiz, and he throws it across, and there's one out. So Ozuna is out on the ground ball to third. Here's Luke Vandover for the first time today. So Josh Nolan is the umpire at first base. He's from Kansas City, Missouri. And then Silas Drayden is an Anchorage native. He's or he's uh, umpire at third. He's having a little chat over there. It looks like with uh, Wharton, Jordan or Jordan Getzelman, their base coach today. First pitch is a breaking pitch, outside corner, strike one. And I don't know if Jordan was talking to uh, Ruiz or he was talking to Silas. Next pitch, well hit left center field. Going back is Tyler Malone. He's not going to get it. It's going to short hop the fence. And Vandover will chug into second base with a stand-up double. Nicely done there by the Chinook second baseman. He liked that pitch, and he drove it over the head of Tyler Malone and left, and the Chinooks have their first base hit of the day. Is Vandover not the biggest guy out there, but he definitely displays power, as you guys just yeah. saw. Good bat speed for Luke, for sure. And that'll bring up the nine hole. Seth Ballinger going to start the game as the DH. He'll he'll switch out with Largusa in left field. Is Luke Vandover has five doubles in official ABL play. So unofficially, that's his sixth of the summer. That's a ball that gets away from the catcher. Throw third is high, and Vandover is still out. Did not get the greatest of jumps, and pretty good job by Castro to pounce on that ball and rifle it down. The throw was high as Ruiz brought the tag down, and Vandover is out at third, so now there's two outs. It's going to go two to five on the caught stealing. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Ballinger. Fouled off to the left quickly, 0-2. Oh, Seth that Ballinger, I'll get to see a bunch of him next year. Uh, he's an East Texas native, and I'm from Tyler, Texas. So 
was the head coach of Tyler Junior College for 17 years. Stepped back in 09. And Seth actually is going to transfer from the University of Texas at Austin, or I mean at uh, Arlington, to Tyler Junior College next year. So I'll be excited to see uh, Seth a lot more regularly uh, next year. Fouled that second pitch off, and or that last pitch, and it's uh, one ball, two strikes to the Chinook DH. John Altman still on the mound for the Bucks. The one-two. This is low. Two balls and two strikes. Still no activity in the Buck bullpen, so we may see Altman for a little while. Each coach does it a little different. Now, what we were talking about before, some of these pitchers will actually pitch in the showcase game either today or tomorrow. I have to turn around and pitch in the All-Star game on Sunday. Fastball misses outside, and it's a full count on Seth Ballinger. The All-Star team – uh, has been decided. We don't have the official names yet, but uh, we'll have them on the air tomorrow. And so uh, we may we may know as, as early as tonight. And so some of your sons may let you know. There's a breaking pitch, and Seth Ballinger is called out. Strike three. First strikeout of the game for either pitcher. And the inning is over. And so a double by Vandover is erased by the catcher Castro as he pounced on the wild pitch. And a strikeout to Ballinger ends the top of the third inning. We'll head to the bottom half when we return. And welcome back to Anchorage. The Chinooks have their second pitcher of the day on the mound. It's Anthony Becerra. And Becerra, 5'10", 170, left-hander out of Shasta College. I believe he's transferring to Jackson, Jackson State. State. Yes. So he'll we'll be headed to Jackson, Mississippi uh, in the fall. He's a Las Vegas, Nevada native. For Anthony Becerra, this is eighth appearance of the summer, 23 and two-thirds innings pitched, 24 strikeouts, 16 walks, an ERA of 7.99. 8-9-1 and one for the Bucks. It's Tyler Malone to lead it off. Ground ball in the first pitch. Tough play for Vandover in the hole, and he can't handle it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm an old coach here. I'm going to score that an error. We'll see what the scoreboard does. And they're going to give him a hit. <laughs> I, I will admit, uh, Kevin, that from the press box, I am pretty tough on those hit errors. <laughs> I always think those plays should be made. That was a, a pretty tough play in the yeah, hole for uh, Luke. He had to go way to his left, kind of short hopped him, and by the time he gathered it up, uh, Malone was already at first base. So he'll be aboard, and here's Willie Escala, the shortstop. We've already seen Escala do a nice job of making a pick on a throw from Jacob Castro, the catcher. And uh, tagging out a runner. So Scala, first pitch misses, ball one from left-hander Anthony Becerra. Here's the 1-0. The miss outside, 2-0. Chinooks, no runs, one hit, no errors. And the Bucks, no runs, two hits, and no errors. We're in the bottom of the third. Fouled straight back on the fastball. Two balls and one strike, and now we are going to get a little activity down that buck bullpen. So John Altman may have seen his last work. He's from Paris Junior College. He's also an Anchorage native, so that's a pretty rare thing here in the ABL. Don't have a lot of Alaskans playing in the league. Here's a 2-1. Ground ball right side through the hole. Kreitzer dove, couldn't get it. And Collins will come up throwing, but uh, – the runner Malone will hold at second base. So that's a solid, solid single to right field. Two aboard, nobody out, top of the lineup now. Jose Ruiz 
So Ruiz steps in for the second time, popped up to second base his first time up. So he's 0 for 1 in this one. On the summer, Ruiz, a 129 average. First pitch is in there, strike one. To go along with that, one double, no triples, no homer, seven RBI over the buck. Third baseman. Malone at second, Ascala at first. The pitch from Becerra, foul straight back. No balls and two strikes. Well, the hitters are aggressive in this showcase. You know, you just don't want to walk. It's not what you want to show the scouts, right? <laughs> Unless you got wheels and then you want to steal a base or two, but. Oh, yeah. You want to hack away here. So these games generally, Kevin, go really quick. Not a lot of extra pitches. Here's the 0-2. Good block by J. Paul Fullerton behind the plate. J. Paul's done a yeoman's work back there this summer. Behind the plate. No outs, two aboard. Here's the 1-2. Uh, it looked to be a changeup, and he just did get a piece of it. The count will remain one ball, two strikes. Bucks wearing the black tops with the pinstripe pants today. Chinooks with the uh, – this is my favorite uniform combination, by the way. The uh, navy blue top with the red lettering across the front and the white pants, and, of course, the red hat. We also wear that camo hat once in a while. There's a tapper right back to the mound, but Sarah – Decides to take the out at first, and there's one away. Probably a smart decision there by Anthony. Thought about going to third, thought about going to second, and then finally decided he'd take the out at first base. So almost works like a bunt right there. Of course, uh, Kenny Hokoff, the head coach, does not want to have his guy sacrifice bunt in a showcase, right? This is this is almost like a, a, a scrimmage. Or I told our players today uh, in discipleship that uh, – it's almost like a Sandlot game. These guys are kind of on their own. No signs in this game. Here's Jake Veith with two aboard in the scoring position. Swing and a miss. Casey at the bat. <laughs> big hack there by the big left-handed hitting first baseman. Leading the ABL in batting average. Veith, 382 average, 11 doubles, a triple, three homers, 21 RBI. Boy, another good block by J. Paul behind the plate. And it's one ball, one strike. Veef just finishing his year at Gonzaga. He was where he was named to the Gold Glove team, so he had a pretty good year there with the Zags. Boy, it'd be great if he got picked up. Oh yeah, uh, get a little chance to play pro ball. I had a chance to play a couple years with Cincinnati Reds, and uh, boy, it was just uh, those are great years that I remember. I have great memories. Um, and I was thankful for the opportunity got into coaching and uh, coached in New Orleans for a year, Georgia Southern for a couple of years, Texas A&M for three, and then 17 as the head coach of Tyler Junior College. Breaking pitch, just missed inside, boy. I don't know if I could have taken that with two strikes. <laughs> but Scott Johnston is the home plate umpire, and his opinion is the only one that matters today on that one. So it's 2-2 two -two with one out and two in scoring position. Malone at third, and Escala at second. Becerra trying to work out of a jam. Fastball missed away. Three balls, two strikes. This is where you might see Jake Veith expand his strike zone a little bit. <laughs> He'd rather get a ha hack away here than take a walk. We'll see what the next pitch brings. Becerra comes set. The payoff pitch missed high, ball four. So Veith draws the walk. And my phone is ringing. I'm not sure who that is, but we'll have to deal with that. So we'll that and I, I'll turn it off. Sorry about that. And that will bring up the second baseman, J.C. Correa. Correa on the summer. He's having a nice summer. 250 average. Six doubles, a triple, a homer, and 14 RBI. Ground ball to short. Ozuna can't handle it. And two runs are going to come home. Here's the throw, not in time. So a little tapper to short in the hole. Ozuna went off his glove, rolled into shallow left field, and heads up base running by both Malone and Escala, and they both score. 
and it's two nothing Bucks. No, uh, probably an infield single, and at least one RBI. But the second RBI is going to be uh, it's going to score on an error by Ozuna. Although that could be, you could score that either way. I don't. They're probably not going to score an error, so I guess technically you don't have to give him an error. That will bring up Troy Clouch. No balls and one strike. One out, still two aboard the pitch. Off speed. And Jay Paul blocks it. One ball and one strike. Clouch, 292 average on the summer for the Bucks. A double and one RBI. He just got here, it seems like yesterday. It does. Right? They won it all. So that's the bad part about winning a World Series in college. It, it delays your time in the summer ball. But I think he'll take the trade off. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> we had a chance to win a national championship at Tyler Junior College in 2007, and it does put you behind a little bit on some of the some of the other things, recruiting wise and otherwise. Uh, but uh, for sure, when you win a national title, people are going to want to come your way. So definitely. in the long run, it really helps your recruiting. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Another low one in J. Paul. Another block. Two balls, two strikes. You know, we have flyovers almost every inning here in Alaska. You know? <laughs> every time we have an anthem, we have a flyover. We're both our ballpark and this Anchorage ballpark are uh, surrounded by airports. That next pitch misses low. Three balls, two strikes. And the truth is, there's you get those little puddle hoppers in uh, Kenai. And I guess not so much in, in uh, Palmer, right, in Matsu. Yeah. Not so many flyovers there. But even there, there's some flyovers every once in a while. But uh, a ton of them at our ballpark in Chugiak. And, of course, here in Anchorage, we not only have the flyovers with the smaller planes, because there's a smaller airport uh, not far from the ballpark, but also the major uh, Ted Stevens International. We see those big jets taking off almost every inning here. So if you're an aviation person, you'd love to come to a ball game here. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. First strikeout for Anthony Becerra. And there's now two outs in the inning. And that will bring up Jacob Castro, the catcher. Castro grounded out to the pitcher his first time up. And so he's over one in this ball game. Castro on the summer. 056 average. He is one for 18 on the summer. First pitch is off the plate, 0 and 1. And my daughter just called, so I had to. Sorry, <laughs> Elizabeth. Fly ball, shallow left. This is an easy play for Largusa, and he'll squeeze it for out number three. That'll do it for the Bucks in the third inning, but they get two runs on two hits. They leave a couple guys on. We'll head to the fourth inning. This is a seven. Happens in a hurry. Back in Anchorage in just a minute. And welcome back to Mulcahy Stadium. Meeting off the 
Kevin Moore along with Dr. John Roof, and we are headed to the top of the fourth inning, and it's back to the top of the lineup for the Chinooks. Second time around for Bailey Collins. He walked his first time up. Collins actually has the best ERA on the team. <laughs> He's a zero ERA. Also has had a nice summer at the plate. 238 for Bailey. There's a line drive into right field, speaking of base hits. And Collins leads off the fourth with the Chinook's second hit of the ballgame. Solid single for right fielder Bailey Collins. That will bring up the catcher, J. Paul Fullerton. For J. Paul, 247 average on the year. On the summer, I should say. Seven doubles, two triples, seven RBI for the Chinook catcher. First pitch swing and base hit center field. So the Chinooks come out swinging it here in the fourth inning. Back to back, they are in business. So here's Anthony Forte. And Forte on the summer has really picked up the pace after a slow start, Kevin. He is up to 258. And if you remember, boy, he started really sluggish, at least average wise. Yeah. And boy, what a summer he's had in the last probably three weeks. 258 average, couple of doubles, two homers, 18 RBI for the Chinook center fielder. Takes the ball one. He'll be hitting in the uh, home run derby tomorrow, right. as will Bailey Collins. They both have two home runs on the year. Two well fielders. 1 0 pitch off the plate. Two balls and no strikes. Two aboard and no one out. It's a 2-0 buck lead. We're in the top of the fourth of a seven-inning ballgame. All these showcase games are seven-inning exhibition ball ballgames. So the 2-0 pitch. Line shot, center field, base hit. And runner's going to be sent home. Here's the throw to the plate, and he'll be out by a mile. <laughs> and... Bailey Collins, a little bit of a collision between he and Jacob Castro at home plate. Oh, Coach Gutzman might have been uh, might have been well suited to hold him up there. <laughs> he just he just wheeled him around. Hey, that's that's what that the scouts want to see. Though. That's what the scouts want to see from. Yeah, the, that's true. From center field, so nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's true. Force oh, oh. the issue. I like force the issue for yeah. sure. Base hit for Forte, and three back to back hits for the Chinooks. As Collins is thrown out for the first out of the inning at home plate, 8-2. to two. That'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Jordan Wharton. First pitch to, to Wharton is a strike. And it's 0-1. Wharton, the leading Chinook hitter. Actually, he and Forte tied with a 258 average. Jordan, seven doubles, two triples, a homer, 12 RBI. 0-1 pitch. Hop up way up there. And Escala is going to call everyone off at shortstop. And there's two away. F6 if you're scoring at the house. Here's Nick Kreitzer to step in for the second time. Kreitzer grounded out to second his first time. I'm over one in this one. Kreitzer on the year, 212 average here in the ABL. Five doubles, a triple. <laughs> we need to give him oxygen on that triple. <laughs> uh, a home run and 11 RBI. So Nick. Why don't I remember his home run? Uh, it was here, actually. Oh, that's okay. right. That's yeah, right. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Sure do. First pitch missed off the plate. It's one to know as a huge jumbo jet takes off behind the center field. <laughs> one no pitch. Took something off of that one, and it's one and one. Well, Kevin, it won't be long. You and I will be on one of those birds, right? <laughs> Time flies oh, when you're yeah. up here, man. Just Feels like yesterday, we, we, we got just, up here. Yeah, just got here yesterday. Like now, middle of July, season's almost done. A couple weeks from now, we'll be disbanding and headed back to oh, yeah. our our homes in the lower 48. And what a summer it is for these Chinooks, boy! You know, we spent about an hour a day in discipleship, opening up the Word of God, and just talking about life and talking about baseball and talking about being a man of God. And it's just an awesome experience. One two pitch to Nick, swing and a miss, struck him out. So Kreitzer strikes out for the first time today. First strikeout for John Altman, the Paris Junior College right hander, 
right here from Anchorage, Alaska. Good way to go out of the showcase for John. We'll be back with the bottom of the fourth. We're halfway through this exhibition game, and it'll be Michael Barker on the mound for the Chinooks. Back in just a minute. We're back at Mulcahy Stadium, and the Chinooks have a new pitcher. It's Michael Barker, and Barker is six foot two fifteen, left-hander out of Vanguard University from Ridgecrest, California. I believe his brother was in town. They might are they still here? You know, I'm not sure. Okay, saw so him in a dugout the other day. His younger brother, I think, is either a junior or senior back home. And so for Michael, this is outing number uh, nine of the year. Six of them have been starts, 31 in the third innings pitched, 27 strikeouts, 24 walks. His ERA for the summer, 6.32. And he will face 6, 7, and 8 for the Bucks. It's Brennan Bro, Jace Vandebrake, and Tyler Malone coming to the plate for the Bucks. Bucks presently in third place in the ABL. Chinooks in fifth place. Of course, we played the Bucks the last three nights in a row. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The Monday, Tuesday games were down here. Wednesday was back. Boy, what a night that military yeah, appreciation day was. Really nice. Such an honor for me to walk the Gold Star mom out to the mound and let her throw the first pitch. The 1-0 pitch is in there, and it's 1-1 one one to Brennan Bro. Well, it's just a makes you appreciate all our veterans. Yes, it does. 1-1 one, one pitch. It's in there for a strike. It's one ball, two strikes. Had the uh, retired vets on the Chinook baseline and then the active duty vets on the third ba or first baseline with the Bucks. I know that I talked to Coach Hokuff uh, after the ball game, and uh, he was – he was. I mean, it's hard to be there and not be moved, for sure, with the Gold Star mom having lost her son in Afghanistan. 2-2 two, two pitch. Just missed low, and it's a 3-2 count now on Brennan Bro. But uh, our hat's off to all the veterans that are listening and that have served us. And there's a 3-2 walk. So Bro is aboard here in the fourth inning. 2-0 box. This is a fast-moving game as the hitters want to get their rips in. Most of them don't want to walk here. Brennan Bro. As a center fielder, probably going to want to show off the speed right here, right? And uh, Jay Paul knows that, so he'll be looking to try to throw him out. Here's Jace Vandebrake, the right fielder. He grounded out to second base his first time up. He's 0 for 1. First pitch is in there, and it's 0 and 1. Vandebrake, 239 average on the summer. Seven doubles, a triple, two homers, and six RBI. 0 1 from Barker. Outside corner, and it's quickly 0-2. Brendan Bro over at uh, first base. Four for five in stolen bases this summer in the ABL. And i got to believe he'll be looking to take off here. This at bat continues. Not going on this one. And a fastball almost got away from J. Paul Fullerton at home plate. And it's one and two. <laughs> Looked like Scott Johnson might have said, hey, thanks. <laughs> and Paul might have hit Johnson right in the mask if Jay Paul hadn't caught it. Here's the one-two. Runner going, swing and a miss, strike three. 
So it'll be a stolen base for Brendan Bro and a strikeout of Chase Vandebrake. So Bro at second, one out for Tyler Malone. Malone reached on an error or a hit, however you want to see it, <laughs> by uh, Luke Vandover at second base. So he reached his first time up on the summer. Tyler Malone is one for 24, hitting 042. Got four walks on the summer. And he's got one RBI. First pitch swinging pops it over our head out of play. And it's 0 1. Malone, the other Oregon State player. So we got the Bucks have two national champions on their team. And it's funny because the Miners, they have a couple players from Mississippi State. Uh -huh. <laughs> the team that lost. Yeah. Well, it's nonetheless, such a treat. I got to play in Omaha my senior year in. in uh, you know, we, we ended up, I think, fourth or I think fourth in the nation that year. Did not win it. But uh, what a what a great to play in Rosenblatt Stadium and play on ESPN every time you played the ball game. We opened up against Greg, Greg Swindell in University of Texas, lost 6-2. to two. We sent Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer from Cincinnati Reds, home. He was at Michigan that year. We sent them home in an elimination game. And then we lost an extra innings to Oklahoma State. Pete Incavilli hit a 1-2 slider. It, uh, our relief pitcher left over the plate. Otherwise, we'd have been on to play Barry Bonds mm -hmm. and Arizona State in the next round. So still a great experience, even though we didn't win it. There's a fly ball to center, and this is Forte running it down. Runner's going to tag, throw to third, not in time. Good base running by Brennan Bro. As he went back when he realized that Forte had to go back on that ball, and he tagged and go to, went to third base. So F8 if you're scoring – at the house, and Bro tags, and now he's at third with two outs, and that'll bring up the nine hitter, Willie Escala. Escala singled the right field his first time up. So Escala, as the PA announcer says it, I'm trying to correct myself here, um, trying to get his numbers, and pretty sure he was a lefty. I think he's a switchy, huh? Get their roster real quick. And he's got him as a right. I guess I just he just went the other way last time. Next pitch misses. And it's one ball and one strike. Hit a base hit to right field his first time up. So he's one for one in this one. There it is. He's hitting 268, having a nice summer. He's picked it up as well. Four doubles, two triples, no homers, and 12 RBI. Pitch is in there. One ball, two strikes on the Buck shortstop, Willie Escala. Brennan Bro third, two nothing Bucks. We're in the bottom of the fourth of a seven inning showcase exhibition game. Check swing, he did not go. And the count evens up two balls and two strikes. Well, we'll talk some more next half inning about the experience that these uh, Chinook players are getting because uh, uh, really unique. That ball's well hit left field. Largusa has room, however. He'll make the catch, and that'll end the fourth inning. We'll head to the fifth inning. It's 2 nothing Bucks. Back in just a minute.
And welcome back to Anchorage. Dr. John Groth with Kevin Moore. And we're headed to the fifth inning. This game just zooms right by, these exhibition games. The hitters are very aggressive, and they aren't looking for walks. They're, Truth be told, really, there's not it's not a real competitive environment, Kevin, just because these guys are trying to showcase their abilities on the field, and winning and losing is really kind of secondary. And kind of an interesting point because that's not that we don't want to win as Chinooks for sure, but uh, we're all about the bigger picture right? and in life. And so, uh, I played two years with athletes in action in my college years, and they made a profound influence on my life. First pitch, Largusa. Strike one. We got a new pitcher. It's Legend Smith. And so for Legend Smith, his seventh appearance of the summer, he has started two ball games. That pitch is going to miss. It's one ball, one strike. 15 and two-thirds innings for Smith on the summer. 15 strikeouts, nine walks, an ERA of 0 0.57. Pretty good numbers. 1-1 one, one pitch. Largusa goes down and golfs it, a little nine-iron shot, and he's on the green. <laughs> he went down and golfed that thing into left field. Good piece of hitting by Jaron, and he's got his first hit of the day. 1B7 if you're scoring at the house. As the Chinooks try to put some runs on the board, here's shortstop Greg Razuna. We spent about an hour a day uh, in discipleship, and boy, I tell you, I needed that. In a big way, when I was in college, I played uh, Division One ball and then a couple of years of pro ball. And Kevin, I don't want to—I don't want to think about where I might have ended up or how life might have been different if I hadn't uh, had the grounding of uh, two summers with a team like Athletes in Action. One ball, no strikes to Ozuna. The pitch low gets away from Castro and run over and pick that one up. Two and zero. Oh. And now you're a part of those discipleship sessions as well. It's awesome. It's awesome to have not only have our players in there, but our whole staff, coaching staff. And uh, if you didn't know that uh, Athletes in Action brings in a number of different disciples as a uh, Smith throws a pickoff over to first base and Largusa back over there safely. Probably look for Jaron just to try to swipe a bag here. Two old pitch coming up. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Snap throw, and Largus is back in time. Yeah, those discipleships really, really help, you know, especially in our walk you yeah. know, with Jesus Christ. And I know the players and myself are definitely benefiting from it as well. So, Well, I know that I was I was a young Christian at the time that I played AIA. There goes Largusa. Popped out of play, and he'll have to go back. It's two balls, two strikes on Gregory oh, no. Ozuna. Yeah. It came at a time when I was a new Christian and I was really hungry to learn what it meant to, to, to be a, an everyday Christian. And so for these young men, I just look into the faces of about 25 young men that were are just like I was 35 years ago when I played my athletes in action. So swing and a miss. Good breaking pitch from Smith. You know, Zuna is the first out of the inning. Second strike, or actually third strikeout for Buck pitching today. That'll bring up second baseman Luke Vandover. Largusa still at first base, and he'll probably try to steal somewhere in this at bat now that he didn't have a chance to do so. He tried to do it one time, and Ozuna fouled off the pitch. So snap throw over, and he's back safely. Now, for a lot of these players, it's the first time that they've really opened themselves up to what the uh, the Word of God says about life. There goes Largusa, throw down to second, and he's going to be safe. Stolen base for Jaron Largusa. And that's that's what we were talking about before, Kevin. You, you want to showcase your tools, right? Oh, yeah. And Jaron can definitely steal bags. Done a nice job this summer for the Chinooks. Goose is what they call them back yeah, home. Affectionately <laughs> known in the dugout as Goose. I know I say that all the time in that third base coach's box. Here we go, Goose. Here we go. And Goose four for four in the ABL play in stolen bases. Fastball misses outside. One ball, one strike on Luke Vandover. 
Vandover, 240 average on the summer, five doubles and nine RBI. Vandover hit that big double in his yeah. last at bat. Fastball misses away, 3-0. and We'll probably see Luke take a rip at this one no matter where it is. <laughs> now, he had a great at bat his first time up. Drove a ball over the left fielder Tyler Malone's head and short hopped the fence. So Luke's already got one double here. Got a 3-0 pitch coming up. Here it is. That's in there for a strike, 3-1. and one. Of course, the pitchers don't want to walk, guys, so that's why this game moves right along. They want to throw strikes, and the hitters – Definitely want to be swinging the bat. Trying to showcase their physical talents in front of some scouts. A lot of these guys have played in front of scouts during their college years, but some of them haven't haven't done so much. 3-1 pitch, a breaking pitch, and Vandover takes a whack at it, misses, and it's 3-2. A lot of these players will play some of their college schedule in front of pro scouts, but never in front of this many at one time. And that's what's kind of cool. They try to uh, streamline this thing so that uh, the scouts can come up on a weekend and see everyone in the league. Breaking pitch and ball four. So Vandover does draw the one-out walk. He'll go down to first base, and so it's two runners on, one out for Seth Ballinger. So the scouts are in here for the weekend, um, and each team will play two showcase ball games, seven-inning exhibition games, and then there'll be an all-star game at uh, 4 o'clock on Sunday, and that is preceded by the Home Run Derby at 1 o'clock on Sunday. First pitch to Seth Ballinger. Just misses off the plate, and it's a 1-0 count. So it's going to be Bailey Collins and Anthony Forte in the Home Run Derby for the Chinooks. This is not a left-handed hitting friendly ballpark for home (laughs) runs. Fly ball, left field, well hit, but not too deep. Malone's got room to make the catch, and he does. And there's two outs. So Ballinger's out on the F7, and that will roll the Chinook lineup over for the third time. Bailey Collins, one for one. He walked and singled the right field, so he's been on base both at bats. Collins, 238 on the season. Four doubles, a triple, two homers, and seven RBI. First pitch to Bailey. A little bloop, shallow left field, and this is a Scala uh, shortstop making the grab for the final out of the inning. So the Chinooks do get a couple of base runners. Largusa gets a stolen base in the inning, but they strand them. And we will head to the bottom of the fifth. This is a seven-inning exhibition ball game. It's still 2 nothing bucks. We are back here at Mulcahy Stadium. Appreciate you joining us on the broadcast as Ken Hocuff jogs around the first base. I always like to see when those base coaches uh, jog a little bit instead of walk. I try to jog as much as I can. My legs aren't too tired from the Alaska Club. <laughs> what a great arrangement we have with that Alaska Club in Eagle River. It's just a first-class fitness facility for our players to enjoy. This, this experience for these guys is really Really a great one. We have great fans. The ballpark's beautiful. The Alaska, the beauty here is amazing. 
fly ball to center field. This is a tough play for Forte, but he'll make it on the run. And there's one out here in the fifth. That was Jose Ruiz flying out to Forte in center. He's now 0 for 3 on the day. That'll bring up Jake Veith, 0 for 1 with a walk for the leading hitter in the ABL. Well, most of these guys are up in the morning and at it at the Alaska Club. And then we go to discipleship, uh, grab a bite of lunch. A lot of us eat the sack lunch at the discipleship. Beef first pitch swing, and he pops it up. It might stay in play. Warden over near the fence. Can't quite get it out of play. And it's strike one on Jake V. Yeah, the schedule's the same. And, and what I tell these guys and what I tell a lot of young men that are considering coming up to the ABL to play for the Schnooks is that it's, it replicates pro ball in a very close way. I played two years in my league baseball, the Reds, and 47 ball games in 57 days. Boy, it's a grind. And a lot of baseball, not a lot of practices. Here's the 0-1. And that's low. One ball, one strike. We got a new catcher. It's Logan White. So J. Paul Fullerton is out. And Logan White, the new catcher, six foot 175 out of Coastal Carolina, native of Gilbert, Arizona. Swing and a miss on the one pitch. It's one and two to Jake V. Bucks, they have a doubleheader today in the showcase game as they'll take on the Pilots right after this game. Okay. Line shot, one hopper. Ozuna backpedals, catches, throws, and gets Veith by a step. And there's two outs. Two up, two down in the fifth. And that will bring up the three spot in the buck lineup, J.C. Correa. Correa is two for two with an RBI. No, that nice day for the young man. Younger brother of Carlos Correa from the Astros. And being the younger brother of a professional athlete, I, I, I can attest firsthand that sometimes you, you identify the young man with his brother, but I'm sure JC would tell you he wants to create his own identity. Yes, and, uh, he's a good ball player in his own right. He swings it well. And, boy, he made a really nice play the other night at third right over the bag. And uh, so he's got some skills. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a foul tip. And it's one ball, two strikes. Yeah, J.C. was actually drafted this year there you go. in the 33rd round by no other than the Houston Astros. <laughs> <laughs> One-two pitch. Line shot, just foul. And we'll do it again at 1-2. Got out in front of the breaking pitch for Michael Barker, who's working his second inning. So the Chinooks reclined us through the first two. Then it was Bracera for a one in the third. Now Barker, four and five. Here's the pitch. Pops this one up. Does White have room? I think he's going to run out of territory. And we'll do it again at one, two. So Barker through the fourth and now the fifth. And then it'll be Cole Whitman in the sixth and River Carbone in the seventh. And the other pitchers for the Chinooks will throw tomorrow's ball game. And there'll be some of those pitchers that we'll have to turn around, Kevin, and throw in the All-Star game Sunday. So – and then we have a league game on Monday. So Just like that. Um, I know the coaches uh, aren't too in love with the whole <laughs> notion of this showcase weekend. I wish we had off days yeah. on the front end and back end. And we got a flyover <laughs> over center field. We got one of those uh, propeller planes going on. Two balls and two strikes, two outs, the pitch. There's a tapper out the middle, and Ozuna can't reach it. So three for three for J.C. Correa. And his day is still perfect. And the Bucks, with two outs, have a base runner aboard for Troy Clouch. Clouch 0 for 2 on the day. Flew out to left field and struck out swinging back in the third inning. We're in the bottom of the fifth. It's 2 nothing Bucks. both teams with five base hits. So it's been more of a pitching type of game. And these, these exhibition uh, showcase games are typically that way. And I'll tell you, it, my, I've been coming up here for uh, seven years now, Kevin. The All-Star game is like this as well. A lot of times these, the pitchers just let it fly and the, the hitters have trouble dealing with it. <laughs> the low-scoring pitching affair. Oh, one pitch. We got in on the hands of Clouch there, and it's quickly now 0-2 oh, on the Buck DH.
Barker shaking off Logan White has the pitch he likes. Here's the 02. That's well hit. High, deep left field. And this is Ballinger now in left field as he's come on as a left fielder, and he'll make the grab on the warning track for the final out of the fifth inning. We head to the sixth inning. It's still 2 nothing. Box back in just a minute. And welcome back to Anchorage, Alaska. We're at Mulcahy Stadium. Dr. John Growth with you here as we head to the sixth inning. And here is Logan White for the first time today. Just came in in the fifth. So the way we're going to do it, just so you know, I'm the coach. I'm going to do the – I've already done the lineup for tomorrow. So Logan will start tomorrow behind the plate. He'll play the first four. And Jay Paul will play the last three tomorrow. So we're splitting the catching duties up between these two guys. And uh, – the lineup will be exactly the same as uh, Tarl Ballinger will start left and Lord Gusa will start as the DH and then they'll flip flop. So trying to even things up best we can. Unfortunately, we got two position players unable to play because of the concussion protocol, Danny Dopp and uh, Thomas Harper. So 2-0 and pitch to Logan White, swing and a miss. Big hack right there by the left-handed hitting catcher. And it's 2-1. and one. This is Legend Smith. Still on the mound for the Bucks, 6'3", 220, the freshman out of University of Oklahoma from Norman, which is right there. Pops it up, and that's going to get out of play back behind us. Two balls and two strikes. Don't know what round, but I'm pretty sure Logan got drafted this yeah, year. Yeah, he got drafted out of high school. Oh, out of high school, yeah. okay. Lead the Dodgers to the, okay. there you go. the late round. 2-2 two -two pitch coming up here, left on left. Here it is. Fouls it straight back. And count remains. Two balls and two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the sixth inning. Bucks lead it 2 0. 2 5 0 for the Bucks. 0 oh, 5 0 for the Chinooks. Chinooks coming off a win on Military Appreciation Night. Boy, just missed on that breaking pitch. I couldn't have taken it with two. Logan gets the call. Scott. Johnston is the home plate umpire, and we have a full count. The windup and the payoff pitch. There's a strike three call inside corner on that one. First one was off the plate, and that one appeared to catch the inside corner. And there's one up and one down here in the Chinook sixth inning. And here is the center fielder, Anthony Forte. Forte, one for two in this ball game. Grounded out to the pitcher to end the first inning. And singled up the middle back in the fourth. Another left on left matchup. First pitch misses inside, ball one. No, we talked about this earlier how quickly the season comes and goes. Mm -hmm. We only have 11 games left in the season. So. Crazy. <laughs> that ball's a little looper in the right and caught by the right fielder, Jace Vandenbreek, for the second out. Off the bat, looked like it was going to go a little further than it did. 
Getting the break, no problem making the easy catch in right field. So two up and two down, and here's Jordan Wharton. Wharton has popped up to the right fielder back in the second inning and popped up to the shortstop in the fourth. 0 for 2 for Jordan. The pitch. And that's in there for strike one. Looked to be a fastball. Oh, one pitch. Swing and a foul tip. And it's quickly 0-2. I don't know if you knew this, Kevin, but um, we, as we see another airplane fly over the uh, left field area, there's been a there's a there have been one of the smaller aircraft that crashed in that football field just out past the left field wall, fouled off by Wharton. Still is 0-2. Oh, have you seen that video? I think yeah, Chris. Chris, <laughs> yeah, he showed me. He was telling me the first time we played here. He was telling me about. Well, that somebody story. had a video camera, and this was this was probably 30 years ago. 0-2 pitch, and Wharton fouls it off. Heads up in the Chinook dugout. Nick Kreitzer waits on deck. Well, the video shows that airplane crashing right behind the flagpole onto that football field. Thankfully, I don't think anyone was critically injured. 0-2 pitch. Pops it out of play to the right once again, and Wharton with a pesky at bat here. Doing a good job of fighting off some pretty good 0-2 pitches from the left-hander from Oklahoma, Legend Smith. 2 Hi, one and two. Every so I'll just tell you, every time I'm at this ballpark, when I hear a plane overhead, I have to look. Sorry, <laughs> just want to make sure it's not coming down on this field. Here's the one, two. Swing and a miss. Got him. So it's a strikeout, the second of the inning for Legend Smith. He ends up striking out three in his two innings of work. And the Chinooks go quietly here in the sixth inning. We'll head to the bottom half. The score remains Bucks two and Chinooks zero. Welcome back to Mulcahy Stadium, and uh, we have a new pitcher on the mound for the Chinooks. Kevin, you want to let us know who's on the mound now? Yes, sir. We have Cole Whitman, the left-handed pitcher from Pelham, Alabama. He stands 6'4", 210 pounds. He attends the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and he'll, be now, he'll now take over for the Chinooks in the bottom of the sixth inning. For Cole, let's see here. This is going to be outing number 13 of the year. They all have been out of the bullpen for the left-handed, 21 and a third innings pitched, 20 strikeouts, 10 walks, with an ERA of 2.95. So a good sum for Cole, and he's in his normal role as a bullpen guy. This summer done a really nice job for the Chinooks as uh, he takes his last couple of warm-up tosses. It's 2 nothing bucks as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. And this is a seven-inning ballgame, so Kevin, this, not unlike the summer, this game is flying by. Oh, yeah. I don't know what time. Well, we we started at 4.07, so we're an hour and 20 minutes into this thing. Easily the shortest game of the year, right? I don't know. Maybe well, you know, if we played a seven that quick. Yeah. No, I'll, in our doubleheaders, I don't think we played a seven that quick. Well, we are in the bottom of six. It's five, six, and seven for the Bucks. Jacob Castro will lead it off. Then it's Brennan Bro and Jace Vandebrake. They'll face Cole Whitman. Or the Chinooks. First pitch fastball over the heart of the plate. And it's no balls and one strike. Caster on the day, grounded out to the pitcher back in the second inning. Flew out to left field to end inning number three. He's over for two. 
0-1 pitch, a breaker, and kind of froze Castro there, and it's 0-2. Keep waiting to, for us to have a Randy Johnson moment with some of those seagulls. <laughs> oh, two pitch out off the plate. And it's one and two. There's it's not uncommon for these seagulls to fly over this field for sure. And every once in a while we have some flying over our field. And a couple of years ago at the All-Star game, or maybe it was a showcase game, we had them on the field. Swing and a miss. Rocky out. So first. Batter of the day for Cole Whitman, and he strikes out Jacob Castro. And there's one out here in the sixth. We had a bird during play, and it was on the turf. <laughs> so we were trying to shoo it away. And uh, I think we may have thrown a pitch or two with the thing just kind of waddling around out there. So, anyways, here's left hand batting center fielder Brennan Bro. Bro is 0 for 1. He grounded out to short, and he walked. He did steal a base back in the fourth inning after that walk. Ended up at third base, but was stranded there back in the fourth inning. The Bucs scored their two runs back in the third inning. A couple of base runners, a walk, and an infield single. Ground ball up the middle. This is going to get through. And Brennan Bro gets his first hit of the day. And there's one aboard with one out. You'll probably see Bro try to steal his second bag of the day. He gets an opportunity here. Here's Chase Vandebrake, 0 for 2. Grounded out to second, struck out swinging in the fourth. First pitch. Boy, that gets away, and back to the screen, a fastball, wild pitch, and Bro will scamper down to second base. So you're wondering, in the mind of uh, Brennan Bro, do, should I stay first? I want to steal this bag and show the scouts I can do it. <laughs> but he went, he went ahead and uh, went on to second base on the wild pitch. Hey, if I'm Brennan, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind trying to take third. <laughs> right. He still can steal third. 1-0 pitch. Got him chase a fastball, and it's one ball, one strike. Well, we mentioned that Cole Whitman's outings are all out of the pen. He actually pitched a couple times this week against the Bucs early in the week. Pitched in that 3-2 uh, loss and the 1-0 loss. Both of those extra inning affairs. Walk-offs. Back-to-back <laughs> nights. Uh, really tough losses. Fouls it straight back. Uh, the first one, a 3-2 loss. I think that was 10 innings, wasn't yep. it? And, boy, that, that no-hitter. A 0-0 game going to the 11th. And a little dying quail hit by Clouch gives the Bucks a 1-0 walk-off, 11-inning no-hit win. So, anyways, Cole was part of that ball game as well. Threw a couple innings in that one. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. And... Strikes out Jace Vandebrake for the second out of the inning. So the Chinooks now one, two, three, four strikeouts in the ball game, and two of them coming from Cole Whitman here in this inning. Here's Tyler Malone. Malone reached his first time on either a hit or an error, depending on who you ask, <laughs> and then flew out to center. So it's either one for two or zero oh for two. <laughs> He did score one of the two buck runs. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Breaking pitch catches the corner, and it's no balls and one strike on the buck left fielder. Oh, one pitch off the plate. One ball, one strike. If you look at the numbers for Cole, he's only the pitcher of decision one time this summer. He took a loss at Matt Sue back on June 19th, a two to one loss. Other than that, he's just come in and given us solid innings all summer. The 1 1 pops it out of play over our heads. And it's one ball, two strikes. Well, I'm driving the F 150 this summer, and that's when I'm broadcasting. Kevin, I always, on those foul balls, I always say, well, 
I drive an Avalon back home. I said, well, that's pretty close to the Avalon here. I better be careful here. So the F-150, no jeopardy on that one. That was straight over our heads. We're parked off to the left here. Here's the one-two delivery. Good block by Logan White. He has two balls and two strikes. Two outs, two-nothing bucks. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning of a seven-inning exhibition game. The Scout Showcase here in Anchorage. Chinooks will play tomorrow at 1, first game of the day. 2-2 two -two pitch off the plate with the fastball, and it's a full count on Tyler Malone. Malone, the eight-hitter in the buck lineup. Willie Ascala waits on deck. The 3-2 pitch. Pop-up, shallow left field, Largusa coming in, and actually that's Ballinger, excuse me, and Seth will squeeze it for the final out in the sixth inning. So F7 if you're scoring at the house. And we'll head to the final inning. Seven-inning ball game here in Exhibition Day. Scout Showcase Weekend here in Anchorage. We'll be back in just a minute. It's 2 nothing bucks. And welcome back, inning number seven. This is it. We'll play through the inning. Uh, even though the Bucks are winning, we'll play through the inning here. And hopefully the Chinooks can score some runs and, you know, force the issue. But uh, we'll play through even even if we don't. Kevin, give us uh, the new pitcher for the Bucks. Yep, so we have number 11, Adrian Marduano on the mound for the Bucks. He is a native of Upland, California. He attends San Diego State University, stands 5'10", 170 from the right side. All right, so Marduano will give you his numbers here in a second. First pitch to Nick Kreitzer. Off the plate with the fastball is one ball and no strikes. On this summer, 10th appearance for Marduano, 13 and two-thirds, 19 punch-outs, just four walks. He has not given up an earned run yet. Two and one and four saves. Kreitzer, pop-up left side. Tough play, kind of no man's land. Who's going to get it? And it falls to the turf for a single, a seeing eye single for Nick Kreitzer. So there you go. He'll take it. Line drive on the scorebook, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Kreitzer with that pop up in that, uh, well, there's two Bermuda triangles on the baseball field. That's one of them right there behind third and right behind first. You got three guys converging and it just fell to the turf. Uh, between all three of them. So that will bring up Jaron Largusa for the third time today. Largusa now the DH as Ballinger has gone to left field, grounded out to short and single to left. Goose also has got a stolen base today. First pitch by Marduano in there, strike one. What a summer he has had. It's only given up one run all summer. It was not earned. Five hits in 13 and two-thirds innings. Struck out 19 batters. And he's 2-1 and one with four saves. Ground ball right back to Marduano. 
He delays, throws the second, and they do get the lead runner, but the relay throw is not in time. So fielder's choice for Largusa, 6-4. Kreitzer's out at second. And with Goose at first, that will bring up Gregory Ozuna for the third time. Ozuna has grounded out to third base and struck out swinging. So he's up for the third time today here in the top of the seventh. Adrian Mardrano on the mound. Very deliberate delivery. And I'm coaching third. He, he takes a moment when he comes set, and it's almost like he's looking right at me. <laughs> So, I'm a, I love pitchers that work fast. So, whenever there's a guy that's slow, I'm kind of paying a little more attention to what they're doing and how they're doing it. He'll check the runner. He'll come set. Here's the 01. Ground ball in the hole. It's short and no play. Jose Ruiz had to leave his feet in the six hole. He did get the ball into the glove. But it's an infield single for Gregory Ozuna. So first and second, one out for Luke Vandover. Vandover, a double in his first at bat, drove a ball to the fence, short hopped the fence back in the third inning. And he walked back in the fifth inning. So he's one for one today. So as commonly happens out there, Castro, the catcher, runs out. And has a little conference with Marduano talking about what the signs will be with a runner at second base. One out, two aboard. Tying run aboard here in the seventh inning. That's a huge raven that just went by. The, the booth. <laughs> First pitch swinging. He fouls it off. And it's 0-1 on Luke Vandover. Marduano was a part of that. A no hit game uh -huh. for the Bucks. He came in relief uh -huh. through the final two innings. Yeah, I'm not sure he was too happy about that drag punt that uh, Bailey <laughs> Collins tried to lay down. You know, it's a little different. It brings up an interesting topic, in my opinion. I know I may have a different opinion than some old schoolers, but it's a zero zero game. Yeah. It's different if it's a no hitter late in the ball game when it's you know uh, five nothing or you know even three or four or whatever. It was a 0 0 game, and, and whoever scored first was probably going to win that oh, game. Yeah. Definitely. And they were a little upset that we laid a bunt down. Here's the 0 2. And Bailey did that on his own, by the way, but I, was, I didn't have a problem with it. Didn't have a problem at all with it. We're trying to win a ball game there. And he laid down a perfect bunt. Perfect. And I think, was it Marduano that made the play, or was it third baseman? It was Correa. Yeah, it was Correa. Again, he's got really good defensive skills. He liked, I asked him one time. So what do you like playing better, second or third? He said he likes playing second better. 0-2 oh, on Vandover, off the plate with the fastball, and it's one ball, two strikes. Correa's playing second today as they have Jose Ruiz at third today. But uh, every once in a while, you'll see Correa over at third. And, boy, he's got he's got some skills. He can run a little bit, too. You know, he's – Probably not the, the the sleekest of athletes, but he can get down the line pretty well. Ball in the dirt on the breaking pitch. He has two balls and two strikes now. Luke Vandover. Good block there by Castro to keep the runners at first and second. We're at the eighth spot in the Chanel lineup. Seth Ballinger, the left fielder now, waits on deck. Arduino comes set, very deliberate. The 2-2. Two -two. Tapper to short. You flip it to second for one. You throw to first, not in time. So cannot flip and dip there. That'll be another fielder's choice, second one of the inning. Oh, the Bucks think that's the final out. Oh. Uh, what was that? The final? I'm not sure what the call was there. Yeah, we're, we're confused in the press box. One, yeah, two. Certainly, was, it definitely was only two outs there. Well, what they might have done, probably runner interference. They might have, they might have called the runner interference a second on uh, Gregory Ozuna. Sometimes they'll do that, trying to protect the middle infielders. My guess is that they're going to call that an automatic double play because of the slide at second base. So, nonetheless, we'll head to the bottom of the seventh. Even though the Chinooks unfortunately cannot win this game, 
Uh, River Carbone will be on to throw the seven for the Chinooks. We'll be back in just a minute. All right, we're on for the seventh inning. And Kevin, you want to let us know a little bit about River? Of course, John. We have number <laughs> 50, River Carbone. He stands 6'7, yeah. so we have a tall six, seven. seven there. 6'7. Right. I thought he was a basketball player the first yeah, time. Easily the tallest <laughs> Chinook pitcher, the tallest Chinook player for sure. 6'7, yeah, 235 pounds from the right side. He is from Downingtown, Pennsylvania. He attends Arizona Christian University. He'll be going into his last year there. All right, and on the Summer River, this is his 14th appearance in the ABL. 15 and two-thirds innings, nine strikeouts, just three walks for the right-hander. ERA of 5.17. Ground ball in the first pitch. That's over to Nick Kreitzer. He's going to take it himself for the first out. One pitch and one out. That's a Scala. The nine hitter grounding out on the three U, one up and one down in the seventh for the Bucks. They lead it two nothing, two six and zero for the Bucks and zero seven and zero for the Chinooks. We're playing through the bottom of the seventh because this is an exhibition game for the scouts. It's the scouting showcase weekend here in Anchorage. None of the games count towards ABL play, and it's an opportunity for all the players in the ABL to be seen by all the major league teams. Next pitch, fly ball, center field, Forte under it, two pitches, two outs. And River might have to throw a couple of balls here in, just to get some pitches in. So Carbone, two pitches, two outs. And that's going to bring up Jig V. So Ruiz is out, and he's now 0 for 4. Here's Jake Veith, and Veith is 0 for 2 with a walk and a couple of ground outs, one to short, one to second. Carbone, at times this summer, has been unhittable. It's going to be <laughs> – that ball got away from uh, Logan White, scampers away. And it's one ball, no strikes on Jake Veith. I don't think he steps out and talking to Logan White. <laughs> Certainly wasn't uh, any kind of message pitch there. Was inside, though. It was much lower. 1-0 pitch. This is driven to left field, and Ballinger goes back, and it's a four-pitch inning, and that's your ball game. So an L7 ends the game. And we wrap this one up quick. Uh, it's 5 49. Figure it out, mathematician. One hour and 42? Yeah. An hour 42 <laughs> for a seven inning affair. Not too bad here. We'll have an early start to get back to the homeland, right? 
uh, bear paw time. So okay. some of our guys might hit the bear paw festival. One of the things that we talked about earlier in the broadcast is that the Bear Paw Festival is going on in Eagle River, and there's a, a slew of people that show up for that festival, and it's uh, really a fun thing for our players to to enjoy. Not uh, for the last for this three day period, so it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, on the Bear Paw. But uh, getting back to baseball here, uh, the final line score for the Chugiac Eagle River Chinooks: no runs on seven hits and no errors for the Anchorage Bucks. Two runs on six hits and no errors. The two runs for the Bucks scored back in the uh, third inning. The inning was led off by a single by Tyler Malone, and then a single by Ascala. He had first and second. A ground ball to the pitcher, and then a walk loaded him up. And with the bases loaded, J.C. Correa hit a ball in the six hole, infield single that bounced off Ozuna's glove, and that's the only runs of the ball game. So I guess in theory, you might be able to give Correa both of those RBIs because uh, both runners came around to score. Good base running by uh, Ascala as he scored as the ball lay dormant there at the shallow left field or deep shortstop. And that was it. Other than that, this was an even, evenly played ball game. The Chinooks actually out hit the Bucks seven to six. Star the game offensively for your Chinooks. Probably uh, somebody had two. It was uh, well, Bailey – Bailey got uh, one hit. Uh, Collins got a hit. Fullerton was uh, one for two. Forte, one for three. And Kreitzer got a base knock. Largusa got one hit. Nobody got more than one hit, so you're looking for an offensive star there, and it's <laughs> kind of hard to find one, but it's kind of nice to see the distribution of offense there. But uh, nobody more than a hit. Luke Vandover got the probably the – the best hit for the Chinooks as uh, he drove a ball over the left fielder's head back in that third inning. Pitching-wise, really a nice outing by all the pitchers from both sides. There really was no, uh, you know, we didn't have any big innings from any, either side. So this is kind of how these showcases go, Kevin. Uh, they're kind of low-scoring affairs that go kind of quick. They're only seven. So in an hour and, what did we say, an hour and 42, 42 in, yeah. we're done. Yeah. And we're going to have a, a post-game meal here by uh, – our gracious hosts and uh, at Mulcahy, which we enjoy those meals. When we play down here at the Mulcahy, it's awful nice. Miss Teresa does us upright. She does a home cooked meal for us, and uh, that's a relationship that's developed over the years between uh, her and Chris Beck and our club. She loves feeding our guys, and so she'll do a home cooked meal, bring it out uh, in uh, in a few minutes. Our guys will, and we'll be down there with them, right? Oh, that, <laughs> that'll no, be we'll good be stuff, there. right? <laughs> so, uh, any final thoughts from Kevin? Well, I mean, quick game. Just like you said earlier, it'll be a fast-paced game as players are showcasing their skills. And it's good that these players get a chance to show the scouts what they have. And we're certainly hoping that, you know, if not a Chinook player, any one of these players will yeah. hopefully get picked up by one of the teams here. But now that you say that, it reminds me that a couple of years ago we had a pitcher. that He, didn't, he, he pitched in this weekend, did a really nice job, got picked up and never – he was done with us. He signed for a uh, really nice uh, – got a nice signing bonus. Wow. And uh, so it can happen, and it's happened, it actually happened for some of the Chinook guys. So um, we will actually tomorrow be on the air uh, maybe a little early. We may go on a little early tomorrow and do some of those pregame interviews. Yeah. I want to uh, do some pregame interviews with uh, maybe both assistant coaches and maybe a pair or two from the Chinooks. Okay. Um, and so – we have the uh, we have uh, some technology here that will allow us to play some interviews during the ball game and before the ball game. So some of you Chinook fans, you may want to log on a little early tomorrow. Game time is one o'clock Alaska time, and so we'll be on maybe about uh, maybe about ten or so minutes early, maybe twelve fifty Alaska time tomorrow, and we'll try to bring you a couple of pregame interviews, give you the the lineups on the pregame show, and uh, and of course it'll be uh, tomorrow's games will feature. So there's a game coming up right after this one. The first game of the day was a 1-1 tie between the Oilers and the Miners. This game finished in a 2-0 Bucks victory. And the final game of the day will feature the Bucks and the Pilots. Tomorrow's schedule will feature the Chinooks and the Pilots in the 1 o'clock game, the Oilers and the Pilots in the middle game, and then the final game of the day will be the Bucks and the Miners. And so that will be the Saturday game. And then the Sunday 1 o'clock home run derby, and then a 4 o'clock All-Star game. And I do know that we have uh, a number of Chinooks in that game, and we'll be able to announce those probably publicly tomorrow. 
some of the Chinook parents will probably hear from their Chinooks tonight as we, we should get word. And, and you'll probably know tonight uh, which of these guys are going to be in that Ulster game on Sunday. We do know that uh, uh, Anthony Forte and Bailey Collins will, will, pl- will hit in that home run derby uh, on Sunday at 1 o'clock. And sometimes they actually broadcast that. I don't know if they're going to do it this year, but they have broadcast the home run derby before. So, anyways, uh, that will wrap things up from Mulcahy Stadium. And it's a 2 nothing Buck win over the Chinooks. We'll be back on the air tomorrow at about uh, probably about 12.45, 12.50. So for Kevin Moore, this is Dr. John Gross signing off from Mulcahy Stadium. Until tomorrow, so long, everybody. <laughs>